I love what I do because it's bigger than me. The Restore and the Playground movement came into existence because when I became manager of the Restore, we had this big parking lot that wasn't used and it costs money to have, you know, rain fall down and roll off the pavement and then all that water has to be processed and I'm like, 600 what every quarter? So if I'm paying money for something, it's got to have a purpose. There is not a playground or a school in this neighborhood within safe walking distance for the children to play on. They already played in this parking lot. I'd find, you know, pudding cups and bikes that were abandoned and wannabe jumps and all the fun stuff that had said, hey, kids have been here. So I thought, why not? Why not designate this as their play space? This is, it's acceptable for you to do it. Um, you own it, you can take care of it. This is where we meet in community. Well, playground blew up. I did not realize how fertile the ground was that these seeds were like thrown on. Every time I've asked the community to provide what our families need to play, provide what our families need to go to sleep without their stomach rumbling, go to school with the school supplies they need, have some extra gifts to open at Christmas, the community has responded. Uh, when I said, Hey, can somebody get some beans and sew some, I wish I could sew, but sew bean bags together. I need like 60 so that after juggling, the kids can take those home with them. We, we definitely had more than 60. It was awesome, just like that. When I said, hey, the kiddos want to play street hockey and I need 12 people to sponsor a stick and some money for nets. Boom, 28 hours later, we had all the funds that we needed for that. One of my friends said, my bank wants to do a school supply drive and so we did that and the community just rallied and I think the first year like 54 kids got a backpack with all the supplies that they needed to start school. The children that are growing up in our neighborhood um, who are different ethnicities that racism would apply to they aren't first generation. This isn't a problem that's, that's affecting them, just them. Looking at it from a systemic racism point, people of ethnicity are gonna make less money in their jobs. They're not gonna be in those management positions. Um, or they came from a household where that was, and out of three or four children, one of them could get to college, could be afforded to go to college. So one of them has a good paying job and they still are helping out their family. Um, and they will continue to struggle. When you don't sit with someone who is different than you and learn the humanity of that race, then the only ideas that you're gonna have about that race is what you see on TV. They tell you those things that are sensationalism and unfortunately the sensationalism that our culture thrives on is drama. Drama, negativity. So the other view that people are gonna see of people of color are the shootings, the, the gangs, all the, the negative news. So I think we really um, don't have the understanding when you're not exposed to other people groups of humanity. This is Laura Gorell, and I look forward to seeing you at the table.